My guest today is shaking his culo eight times a week as Emilio Estefan in the Broadway smash On Your Feet. He's also been seen in Estrada Jones, Dogfight, and on the big screen doing the nasty with Amy Schumer in Trainwreck. I'm <laughs> thrilled to be sitting just a few feet away from Josh Segarra. What's up, Paul? ¿Qué pasa, papa? Aquí, jangueando. Oh, no, 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 no Spanish. That's okay, okay, no, that's I'm not done, I'm done. That was a Spanish <laughs> person. I'm so happy to see you. Good to see you too, buddy. Look at you, living the dream. Yeah, man, on your feet. To. Like, people are going crazy on your feet, right? Yeah, they're, they're dancing their culos with us, so I'll take it, bro. Are you having fun up there? I'm having a ball, man. You know, like, come on, I get to, I get to be a part of a... A Miami Sound Machine Gloria Stefan concert every day. That's the best, you know. <laughs> like literally. That, yeah. you, that I was thinking about the energy level of that show yeah. is is up there. Absolutely. So so what is it like to be doing that? I mean, to be living in that energy. Does that mean like in your downtime you're like listening to like mellow folk yeah. music and just like super <laughs> Absolutely. chill? Just sometimes just laying it just with my eyes closed, just in like silence <laughs> and darkness. No, man, it's the best. Like I always joke with my cast because they're out there, you know. They give it 180%, just like busting behind, you know? And I just stand off to the side watching them do their thing, you know? I come on, I do my thing, we move the story along, right. and then they're out there shaking it, man, showing, showing what hard work gets you, those guys, you know? One thing uh, that's special about this show is how Gloria, Estefan, and Emilio were very involved yeah, in creating yeah, it. They've been around this whole time. From the beginning, yeah, from the first reading. So, the first time we met. and they were also involved in the casting. They were, they were. And they Emilio were. was very excited to find you. I mean, he was very excited to tell people that like, you're the guy, you're the guy. So what yeah. was it like actually, did you like audition in front of him? No, I, uh, I got offered the first reading, which was just, uh, you know, eight, nine of us around a table, wow. you know. Um, and, uh, and part of that eight, nine was Gloria and Emilio, you know, and Jerry was there and, uh, and Alex, our writer. And so I guess that was my first audition, you know, it was a week long reading. We kind of just, uh, and that's the, that's, that's, that's the blessing is that I got to do a week of it. You know, yeah. if it was just one audition, who knows how I would have done. I right. could have bombed it, you know, but right. it was something that after the five days of working on it, I knew how much I connected to the role. I knew how much I connected to him, how much uh -huh. I loved and respected him after that week. That right. was the type of thing where I didn't want it to go anybody else. I wanted it to be me, you know. So are you sick of Conga yet? Is it possible? No, you're absolutely sick of Conga? not. Are you I, mean, I feel like me? I can listen to it on repeat. And that's the thing. I, I thought that at this point I might have uh, maybe uh, tucked away the Spotify playlist, but it's still front and center, you know. It and is. like, and that's the thing. Like at the end of Act One, when you get to uh, hear the Conga, it's fun, man. It's the best to see everybody in the audience just kind of light up, you know. Yeah. And you can see the energy kind of get higher. You can see everybody just, unless people haven't heard yet, then something happens that you get to join in and it's awesome. Right, yeah, right. It's awesome. Now, as a Puerto Rican guy, is your family yeah. like so super excited oh about this show? God, like, are yeah. they out in the audience freaking out absolutely, with, with all of us? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it just means so much to them. It means so much to my parents and my family in Puerto Rico right now, you yeah. know. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be a part of a few news clippings out there on the island and, uh -huh. you know, they get to see their nephew and their cousin and and it just means so much you know for me in this business I've had a lot of um, uh, a lot of questions about where I fit in you know uh -huh. whether I'm Latino enough to be Latino if I'm white enough to right. be white right, all those right, things right. that the business does to you yeah and now I finally get to flesh out who I who I am how right. I grew up you know right. uh, the things that uh, make me who I am I get to put them on stage now it's exciting were there any uh, like bonding sessions with Emilio when you were oh. like getting ready for this? Absolutely. I mean, you know, just time spent, you know, uh, uh, cocktails shared. Yeah. Just time spent. What's Emilio's go-to cocktail? Oh, he's Botran Ron. You know, his company, Botran. Oh, oh you okay. know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even, <laughs> don't even question it. Botran is, is it right there. That's the <laughs> Estefan way. No, we just, uh, just getting to know him, getting to know how he grew up. You know, that's a story that I, that I don't know personally, immigration, right. you know, and he came over here and and you know how much he wanted to protect his family how much he wanted to protect his loved ones and give them the life that he wanted and now look at him you know look at them they've just uh they've really just stayed true to who they are and humble and gracious and living a good life you know so are they still around a lot i mean you're they like, are you're like, yeah you're like months into the run now oh yeah yeah, yeah. they still you know like, i think they were with us honestly from first rehearsal of chicago through chicago through yeah. previews, opening, and even kind of through holidays, you know, and then they went back to Miami. They're doing a million things. Right. Doing, they have their hand in a lot of things, and they're all amazing. So they'll come back and pop in and come see the show and check in and make sure everything's going well. And have you been to Miami with them? I have not yet. Okay, I had gonna, a trip planned. Oh, just an amazing I can't house. wait. They do. They, you know, <laughs> like, are they on like Star Island? Or yeah, something? absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That's they, where you live. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I remember the first time I asked Emilio that. I was like, you guys are in Miami, right? And we're, I think we're at like a urinal. I was like, you guys are in Miami, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, where's you, where do you guys live again? Like, what part? And he's like, Star Island. I was like, oh, yeah. Do you have any guest rooms? Yeah, I forgot any? about that. Yeah, any extra space <laughs> I can go and hang in for a little bit? But if not, I'll get down there soon. Probably at the end of the run, get down there. and. Uh, so 
Yeah, that'd be time. fun. I think you should. Yeah. So sure. on opening night, I had to ask you about the short shorts because of one of the biggest like moments in this show is basically everyone looking at your butt. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because there's a whole thing made out of it. Like you're yeah. wa you walk out on stage in these little yeah. short shorts. And the funny yeah. thing is, I was looking for a photo. Okay. There's no photos. There's no photo evidence. Like okay. there's literally a photo of you in the shorts, and it's cropped. Right it's at like, the shore. Yeah. So you, it looks like you might be wearing pants. That's awesome. I'm telling you, it's like you got to pay. Full price. You got to, for the short Yeah, short. yeah, not even two for one week. Two for <laughs> one, I was wearing long pants. <laughs> no, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> and Alma Cuervo, you know, she literally makes a joke about it. And yeah. it's literally like a whole thing. And yeah, the audience goes a, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, how does yeah. it feel? And you've said that, like, you're like a formerly, like, chunky boy. Yeah, good. So how does it feel chunky. now to have, like, an entire audience, like, hooting and hollering and working oh, the short shorts? I did, uh, Paul, I don't even know what to tell you, man. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you what I have to prep myself before that moment every day. I literally stand off stage. A shot of Emilio's juice, Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, a little botran. <laughs> now that I'm watching Tradition, which happens right before I walk out there, I'm watching my cast do their thing, killing it, and I'm just standing back there in this polo shirt, white shorts, and little boat shoes, and just like, okay, Josh, here we go, man. You know, like, I don't know what the crowd's going to do, because sometimes they're silent. Oh, they're just silent. They're oh, yeah. Just, they're, sometimes, just taking, they're just taking yeah, it out. Yeah, taking sometimes it it's in. like, oh, wow, we are back here. You know, like, we've arrived <laughs> back in, to, we've gone back in time, you know. Uh, and other times I get a little hoot and hollering. That embarrasses me just the same sometimes. You know, it's... It, I'm always embarrassed. I'm always just like, okay, go out there, think about the character. Right. This is what he right. was wearing. Stay yeah, stay focused. <laughs> but then, you know, of course, I see Almita out there, I see Andrea, you know, and they, uh, and it settles me again. Now, I mentioned Trainwreck. Yeah. Because I rewatched your your moment in Trainwreck. <laughs> uh -huh. It's definitely a moment. Okay. It's a very okay. memorable moment. <laughs> You're bare ass. It is full. That's you. Touch. That's not a butt double. No, no, no. That is all me. Man. Did they have to audition your butt? Did you have to show it no. to them ahead of time to make no. sure it wasn't it's gross? No. Okay. I didn't know there was going to be a butt shot. It, they threw that at you. It, they threw that at me that day. So I got to set, <laughs> I got to set, and of course, I'm, I've am i been wanting to work with Judd Apatow since, yeah. you know, heavyweights, okay? Of course. I, I, heavyweights was my movie right. growing up. Right, And uh, of course, I wanted to work with Amy, and, you know, I, I get to set, and we shoot uh, one scene that got got cut from right. the movie. It's in the extended version of oh, oh. So we shot that scene first. And after that scene, you know, the scene originally was just like, you know, we come home, we stumble. We get into bed and we the uh, hilarity ensues. So you know, I, I in my head, I, I'd maybe done a juice cleanse, getting ready for for yeah. being shirtless. You know, yeah. I don't think I did, but I wish I would have. <laughs> and uh, and we were walking off set, and we're going back to trailers and stuff. And Amy's like, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm gonna ask you something. What's up? You know, she's like, in the scene, do you mind? I think I have an idea. We're gonna pull down. You know, your pants will go down, and we'll see a big shadow. And I'm gonna set this up. Her idea was to just stand and stare at your thing and make a bunch of jokes about yeah, it. That yeah, that was her idea. Yeah, yeah, that was. That <laughs> was her. Her brilliant idea was, why don't you pull your pants down? Yeah, and yeah, I'm just I gonna stare I, at it and make a bunch of jokes. Well, the Paul, I'm gonna riff. Yeah, I'm gonna riff exactly. <laughs> and what was funny is that like a month and a half, two months before. I had just done something similar on Sirens. My show oh, I know. USA. I've seen it. Yeah. Well, dude, when you like search you on Google, <laughs> if you do an image search of you, there you, I mean, oh, you're basically naked. Bro, like it's I very, know. there's animated I GIFs know. and there's a whole, it's a whole thing. After Sirens, after that episode came out, I had, I had a buddy call me and he was, you know, surfing around and he was like, <laughs> Josh, you made it. What are you talking about, man? He's like, I found you online on a very interesting website. Congratulations. I was like, thank you, my brother. Thank you. I made it. You know? So that was her idea. So, of course, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting on this. I set. mean, a Latin guy does like that attention, you're right? I mean, it's, it's, it's in your blood. I've ever got, you know? <laughs> uh, my wife was like, are you kidding me, Josh? Again, we're going to do this? I was like, I know, baby. I know. I'm sorry. So she said, I'm going to stare at your thing and make a bunch of jokes. Yeah. But... And, and I'm gonna like, ask. I'm gonna ask something really specific oh, now. Right Is there yeah. like a sock? Oh yeah, the the, so. the the terminology. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it. Can I say cock sock? That's what. That's what you a just banana did. hammock. Okay, you I just did. did. Yeah. Yeah. So why that's. Not? The, I, I and it just, just grips one. to you. It just grips. It's like a little, just. a little clear string. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like a piece of sock and a clear string. It's nothing like more flattering, Nothing right? more flattering. The most masculine looking thing Absolutely. ever to be wearing one of those Absolutely. and nothing else. So Paul, okay, so <laughs> we're talking about this, of course. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it sounds so good. Yeah, it's so exciting. So I go back to the trailer, you know. Now, I had done something like this before. Not even on signs. I'd done something where they needed to buff me up a little bit because they were going to see a little tush, right? Okay. So, so they tan me. Okay. They buzz you. Yeah, yeah. You know, they really take care yeah, of you, yeah. okay? Not that day, man. I go back to my trailer, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm hanging out, I'm eating there lunch. There was no one to take care of. We get to set, and it hits me. I'm literally standing in front of the camera, and Judd is like, all right, Josh, let's go, man. You're about to join a really cool club. So you cool got the club. thing on now. I have the thing on. The thing. Pull him down. 
not one person has looked at my butt. I haven't looked at my butt. I don't know what's going on back there, man. You know, wow. like, I, it could have been a big zit or it something. It could have been anything. That would have been awful. The camera's right there. Yeah. You know? That was so close. It looked really close. Seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was literally, it's a full ass shot, bro. <laughs> so the whole seat, I'm just sitting there with, of course, Amy killing me. You know, I'm laughing my head off. Judd is in a tiny speaker in the corner of, of the room on a mic making up his own jokes. Oh, and I'm wow. just standing there, banana hammock on. You're just like laughing. Hopefully, no zits. Hopefully, you know. A clean man, you know. So it looks like the whole cast of Game of Thrones. I don't yeah, know what that means. Absolutely. I don't know what that means. But, uh, I don't even know what it means. But yeah, so it how long did that? How long did that moment actually happen? Oh, I mean, dude. I'm sure it felt like eight hours. But I think how? It, it felt like eight hours. Honestly, not exaggerating. I was probably standing there for about an hour. <laughs> Yeah, about an hour, you know, like each take was a few minutes because she and they a, go off to like write a fresh joke. Oh, and yeah, you're still absolutely. standing there with the I whole crew. Were, yeah, I knew they were having the time of their life, bro, because because Judd was literally ripping them and Amy's ripping them. They, I mean, there's a clip online, of like a three minute long uh, blooper reel of uh-huh. just her in bed uh, with my okay. butt on screen this is your and butt. her and just a bunch of jokes. throwing <laughs> jokes, you know, and me just standing there, just like hopefully she's not like too unimpressed by me, you know, like. So how did it? <laughs> feel to well it was very flattering i mean she's yeah. making jokes yeah very flattering yeah. Yeah, yeah but how did it feel to see that ass on a big screen it was startling i never <laughs> thought that like i would see it all my friends thought i shaved i'm like guys no that's natural that's my ass. baby that's me baby you know I, I, I didn't even know i was ready but i was ready you know and i loved it man like to be honest, it was just like uh, Judd said something. He was like, you know, when I was working with Siegel and talking about Jason Siegel and stuff and forgetting Sarah Marshall when he's running around naked, I was like, man, I guess I, get, I, guess I am in a pretty cool company, you know? Like, uh, I get to show my tush up there. So I'm laughing about it now. It's the best, man. I you also to got to do some, wreck, some things we can't even discuss to Amy Schumer. Oh, on camera man. That, we, laughed, mean, we laughed our asses off during that yeah. shoot, man. We yeah. had the best time. Just the best she time. Was, she was fun. She was oh, real. she's the best, dude. Cracking jokes left and right. And... Of course, you know, anytime I made her break character, I felt like, you know, a stud. I was like, oh, I've got Amy laughing, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, it was a good time, man. It was a really good time. I got to talk to Judd a lot about all of his stuff. You know, I was just fangirling the whole day. I'm talking to Amy about Inside Amy Show. I'm talking to Judd about all of his stuff. You know, I, I got to meet Bill Hader in the, in, wow. in the makeup trailer. I'm talking to him about Stefan and just, I was literally fangirling for about three days there. Stefan, not Estefan. No, not Estefan, right, Stefan, you know. <laughs> it, was the, it was a great experience. That's man. awesome. Really cool. And I love that you Instagrammed a picture of yourself in front of the movie poster <laughs> pointing at your ass and yeah, you just dude. wrote hashtag typecast. Yeah, of course, bro. Typecast, Do you baby. feel like people are objectifying you at this point? <laughs> I, I, uh, no, I, I, Casting director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, look, I always say that I got to shake what my, mom, what my mama gave me, you know? Like, I've had these tree trunks for life, bro, and I've been embarrassed by them forever. At least now I can showcase them a little bit, you know? So take me back to that little boy, that little boy in Florida, right? You grew yeah. up, like, outside of Orlando. Outside of Orlando, Florida, a town called Longwood, Florida. Okay, so what was your, what was your childhood like? Uh, I had a pretty, I had a pretty amazing childhood. I, I, I come from a really loving, supporting family. I'm the oldest of three. Have a little brother Danny, uh, who's 23 now, and my little sister Becky, who's 20, about to be 21 in March. I played sports growing up my whole life. Uh-huh. It was something that I was really into. Uh, you know, I, I still am a really big sports fanatic. Right. And when I got to uh, middle school, I had a buddy uh, who was doing the community theater, and they were doing the Wizard of Oz, and I, right. and I used to do stuff in church a lot. And uh, I never really knew about what this thing was, the theater. You know, I knew right. about plays and stuff, but I, yeah. didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't know what Broadway was. I didn't right. know what these things were. And yeah. I got into the Wizard of Oz, and the rest was history. I got to high school. You were the lion. I was the lion. The cowardly, I was the cowardly lion. lion, yeah. And, uh, and I got to high school. And when you, when you say that you were, you were, were you actually chubby? Were you like a little chubby boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, or I was, you just, uh, are you just one of those guys that just says that? No, no, no. By the end of elementary school into like uh, early high school, you know, I, I was, uh, I was the butt end of a couple jokes th- at that point, you mm-hmm. know. But it, I'm happy that I went through all that because I found my real friends, my two best friends that I've had since I was a kid, mm. are still my best buddies. And uh, you know, you learn a lot about yourself at right. that ver- at that very pivotal age. Mm-hmm. And uh, and to honestly, for me, it was the theater. You know, the theater was where I was finally accepted, and the theater was where um, I met my best friends. The theater was where I, I got to flesh out that little nervous kid inside, Mm. or that little shy kid that uh, felt at home, you know, on the stage. And uh, that's when I got to high school. I had a really influential teacher named Mrs. Mueller. You know, she always used to say, we're not doing high school theater, we're doing theater in a high school. And that's always stuck with me. Because she was always teaching us that we're not doing this for, yes, it is fun, but we're doing this because you need to learn how to tell stories. You need to 
what do you love about telling stories? Yeah. And I just fell in love with it, man. I, and I got to be Harold Hill. Yeah, you're a Harold Hill. I read I that. To, yeah, I got I to feel like you'd be a great Harold Hill. Thanks, man. I love that. Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever be a Harold Hill now in life, but I sure hope someone will give me the chance one day. That'd be you awesome. Know? That would be awesome. And uh, I got to do so many fun things. And um, it was a great place to grow up, Longwood, Florida. And uh, I ended up going to college up here by the influence of one of my best buddies, you know, mm -hmm. who was really into looking at colleges, and I necessarily wasn't. I was just going to go to Florida State, a really great theater program, yeah. and it was in-state. I got to, yeah. I was going to get a scholarship to go, and uh, he just kind of uh, pushed me a different way. He's like, I don't know, man, I feel like you should go to New York, you know, like, wow. I know you're going to miss us, but look, man, the school's pretty good, and like, you got good grades, and like, it's, uh, you'll be in New York. This is my best buddy at 17, you huh. know, like, looking at his best friend, going mm. like, I know we're not going to be together. He's like, but you got to go do this thing. And uh, and the rest is history, man. I came up wow. here for college, and uh, I loved being up here. You know, I, I tell anybody that if you get ch a chance to go to NYU, man, go. It's an amazing experience, you know. And um, I don't know, man. You know, like now, life's fantastic, Paul. I can't lie. You know, like I, I have an amazing I have an amazing family. I love my I love my lady at home. I want to talk about your lady at yeah, home. Yeah, I have my little pup. She, she's gorgeous. Oh, come on. My brace, that's that's my baby, you know. She's the best. So how did how did you get her to fall in love with you? Oh, dude, who knows, man. She actually wanted nothing to do with me at really? first, of course. Yeah, yeah. How'd absolutely. you meet her? We met through my buddy Jermaine at his birthday party. And uh, she was talking to a group of people, and he wanted to introduce us. And we'd known each other. We hadn't met each other, but we both known him. It's okay. her best friend from home. And uh, she was about to leave the party after we'd met. And I was like, where are you going? And she's like, ah, I got to get up early tomorrow for work. I was like, yeah, we haven't, we haven't even talked yet. She's like, okay, sorry, man. Like, I got to go. And I was like, yeah, but what happens if we're supposed to get married one day, and, and we didn't even talk tonight? I swear. You went there? I went there. You, and of you course, went right there. Of course, she was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I was like, come on, you know, like, just to hang for a little bit. And look at us, man. Wow. So she, she wanted nothing to do with me, of course. Of course. I, I, we were texting for a little bit. I think it was on, I met her on a Monday. I, we were texting on Tuesday. And I was like, let's grab a drink tonight. She's like, I'm busy. Okay, tomorrow I'm busy. She's like, I'm actually busy until Saturday. I was like, you're busy until Saturday? <laughs> She's like, yeah, and actually only Saturday day. I was like, Saturday day is Ooh, the only day? she downgraded you. Oh, she, she downgraded me, you. bro. She killed me. She <laughs> cut me out the knees, man. And then, you know, the rest is uh, the rest is it, man. I, 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 I knew after that first date, man. She's, she's, uh, she's made, you know, man, you're in this business too. And this business is something that goes like this. Yeah. And uh, I had my family growing up that always had my back, and they still do. But it's so nice to have her, to have my rock. You know, mm -hmm. she's, she's um, you know, you find out why you do this. You find out why, we, why you put yourself through this world sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And when you have something to remind you that, yeah, man, this is all mm -hmm. great and this is all fun, but the reality's out there, you know, and I've got my family. I've got my little pup. I've got my Susiekins. Your wife's name's Brace, Brace, which is a great name. Yeah, the, you'll never meet another Brace. What a great, what a great absolutely, name. Absolutely, absolutely. And what's your dog's name? Susie. That's the little, those Susie are your girls. Susie Seguero, bro. So, okay. Those <laughs> are my girls. You'll always hear me talk about my two girls. And those, my little furry girl and my human girl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a little real human girl? Oh, yeah. yeah. Funny that you ask. We're on our, you know, we're on our way. All right. We're, we're talking. All right. We're, we're making that happen. How does your wife feel about um, your 80-foot uh, wide ass on the, <laughs> on the screen in Trainwreck? She loved it, man. She's, <laughs> you know, that's why I know that, like, she's my partner because she just supports me, you know? Like, she laughed her head off with me, you know? Uh, she knew that I was a little embarrassed, and she knew that I was maybe a little shy, and she's just like, Josh, go out there and do your thing, man. Like, Go be you, you know, mm. and, and that's all you need to be is just you. So when, when it came out, I think we were both just kind of holding each other, just watching. <laughs> and our, our, my in-laws were on the outside and my parents were over there. And I was just like, here we go, babe. Here <laughs> we go, you know. So she's, uh, dude, Brace is the best. That's right in the beginning of the movie. So then you can relax. Oh, yeah. No, no, uh, no, set, no, 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 it's right. no setup. No, no, just get, get right no, in there, bro. Just I'm going to wake you up, man. I'm going <laughs> to prepare you for the rest of this movie, you know. So what's the best thing about On Your Feet, about that job? Oh. We got, if people haven't seen it, you got to come check it out. I mean, you have to, man. So much fun. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, what's the best thing? There's so many good things. The best thing is that you walk out feeling good. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. like, some, you know, I've been a part of some shows that I love the story that we were telling, and I've seen shows that I love the story that I was told. But sometimes you walk out and you're like, wah, wah, you know, mm. or like, man, mm -hmm. the world is a tough place to mm -hmm. live in, or this and that. Nah, man, you come to our show, I... I 
from what I hear, people walk out feeling energized, you know, mm -hmm. they can take on the world. You're meeting, you know, two individuals and their family. What they did, man, what happens when you fight for each other? What happens when you fight for love? What right, happens right. when you fight for what you believe in? What it can get you, you know, right. and that's, what, uh, that's the story we're telling up there. Right. And amazing songs. Come on, and amazing major, come on, major Sergio uh, Trujillo uh, Sergio choreography. Murdering, you know, like and those those dancers up there, those are the that. best eight dancers, man. They're up there murdering, you know. Like I'm not lying when I tell you, I'll stand in the wings and just watch. You know, we're a couple months in, and I still just hang and just watch them do their thing, and then they end their song, and all right, let's keep going, you know. So what is it like backstage when it's all Latinos in the show? I mean, it's all <laughs> Latino cast, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 of course. So like, It's a lot of love, man. Yeah, they, what's that like? A lot of love, just everybody's so happy to be there. Everyone's so honored to be a part of something like this. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone, you know, uh, sometimes there's only one Latina girl in a show. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's only one Latino guy, and all of a sudden right. you've got 28 of us on stage. Right you know, telling a story that we're really passionate about that's very personal to some of our cast, you know. They've gone through that. They've, right. gone, th they've gone through leaving their family to, c to come to the States. And what's it like to live the American dream? So for me, honestly, I'm humbled to be a part of it, you know, because I, I, I'm a Puerto Rican kid that was raised with the, with the opportunity to come back and forth, you mm -hmm. know. My family was given the opportunity to open a pharmacy in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, they worked really hard for it, but some people aren't given that uh, gift. Mm. And uh, so for me, man, I honestly go to the theater, you know, I get dressed. I, I love seeing my cast. I love hugging everybody and just saying, all right, man, let's do our thing tonight. You yeah. know, you go and we do it and we know that there could be uh, 25 people in the audience and there can be 1,500. And either way, we're getting to tell a really special story, you know, that is, is hopefully going to touch somebody out there. Yeah. So to be a part of that. Right. Come on, what else can you ask for, you know? Yeah, that's do he's doing his thing. You're doing yeah, your thing at the, to, the Marquee Paul, Theater. To. Everyone has to check out on your feet exclamation point hey, and okay. it earns its exclamation point. Yeah, I just say like not yeah. every show earns its no exclamation way. point. No way, Jerry Mitchell made sure of that, yeah. bro. That exclamation <laughs> point is there, my friend. Oh, Actually, yeah. Jerry Mitchell should just have an exclamation point at the end of his name yeah. <laughs> legally. Yeah, I think he does. I think I think it's Jerry Mitchell exclamation point hashtag full out. That's his full <laughs> right. name. Yeah, then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by, Josh. Thank you, bro. So good to see you. It's great to see you, man. This Everyone awesome. check out on your feet at the Marquee Theater. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.